in the different discourses and in the introduction that only it is the fortunate ones that are present here today to indulge in the glory of Gurudev, to receive his mercy through his lotus lips, to look at him, to have his darshan, because he has each and every one of you present and here in his heart. He knows that he has to care for the fallen souls of the world, therefore he has appeared on this planet to save us from the degradation and the onslaught of the age of Kali as it continues and as the clock ticks and it gets worse. Today, we are indeed once again very fortunate to be present here to listen to the glorious Harikatha that Srila Gurudev is to present to you. We welcome all of you present here today. We welcome the sannyasi gun that is present here, the brahmacharis that have journeyed with them, the devotees that have assembled from all over the world actually, from different countries that have converged upon this country to listen to Srila Gurudev speak. We welcome all of you and without any further ado, I wish to hand you over to Srila Gurudev, who will address you today. In saving the Lord's feet of my Siksha Guru, Nitya Lila Pramishto Vishnu Bhat, Asrata Sushma Bhakti Vedan, Swami Maharaj, my dear Sanyasi, Brahmachari, Vaishnavi and Vaishnava. Yesterday, we have discussed about Brahma Mohan Lila and his Stuti. He told that any of the Praja, any one of the Praja, even not present, 
Gokul in N, Gokul. I will take as a sweeper, my bath sweeper, and I will, in the evening or when I will return from sweeper work, then I will rough my feet on that stone. Even I want to be a stone. And it does say, no mithyati aprabhutu se tari tambaraya ityati. He did so many stota prayers. After that, one day, Krishna and his father were grazing their cows, but in a forest where there is no fruits, no mango, no other fruits. So, the Gwalbal Sattha of Krishna is to Gwalbal Sattha told, we are very hungry. This demon we cannot remove. Place nearby some trees, but there is a penukasu. Very carefully we will have to do. How what we can penukasu? Nila you. Guru Ved Guru Chandra. Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tara Bhaktaya Namunam Panchakal Patrubhyas Chakrapasam Devacham Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnara Bhyo Namunam Mukam Karoti Vachala Pangam Langayate Yastrapata Maham Mande Shri Guru Nimataya Namunam Shri Guru Dev has instructed me to speak on the Lila of Dhenukasu. So, as he was telling in the beginning, the boys, the cowherd boy friends of Krishna were feeling very hungry. Very hungry. They had one demon in their stomach. His name was Hunger Asur. So hungry, and they wanted something to eat. And they knew nearby there was one beautiful forest full of tall trees with wonderful tall fruits. Tall tree is like a palm tree, but it has a special fruit called tall fruit, which is very sweet. So, in this forest, Talban, this actually belonged to King Kams. King Kamsa, everyone knew his mission in life was to kill Krishna because he was afraid Krishna was going to kill him. So he had demons stationed in every location, always keeping on the lookout. Where is Krishna? If you see him, you should kill him. So he had special demons guarding this forest of Taliban. The head of these demons was named Dhenukasu. Actually, they were all in the forms of donkeys. And they were guarding this forest very carefully. But anyhow, the boys, they wanted to eat. They were very, very hungry. So they all decided, okay, let's go into this forest. And they started shaking the trees to get some fruits. Shaking these trees, so many wonderful fruits were coming down. And the boys were very happy. They started to eat the fruits. Everyone was feeling, ah, my stomach is feeling a little bit satisfied now. Suddenly, in Kasur, he caught when he heard some of the noise, some boys shaking the trees, and he said, hey, what is that? He came running into that area, this donkey demon, and all his friends came running. And there they saw Krishna and Balaram and so many of the cowherd boys. They were there enjoying the fruits which belonged to King Kamsa. Wow, how dare these boys steal the fruit which belongs to the king? We will teach them a lesson. So immediately, Denukasa, he ran forward, 
and he turned around and with his hind legs he kicked Baladev Prabhu in the chest. <clears throat> Baladev Prabhu was completely unmoved. Baladev Prabhu and Krishna they saw, oh, what is going on here? So Baladev Prabhu he took the hind leg of Dhenukasa and began swinging him around and around and around and around. And he threw him up into the top of the tall tree. And then, well, it became a mayhem because all the other donkeys came rushing. The coward boys had to run back in fear, but Krishna and Balaram, together, they caught all of the hind legs of all of these donkeys who were actually demons sent by King Kamsa. And they were swinging them around and around and throwing them into the tops of the trees. And one tree after another began to fall down, and all of the trees, all of these tall trees began to crash down, and all of these demons had lost their lives. Needless to say, there was a little bit of a mess. The boys had lost their appetite, so they could no longer enjoy the fruits. They were not so hungry anymore. Who does this demon Dehnuka Asura represent? This demon Dehnuka Asura represents ignorance. It means literally tamagum. I don't know what is true. I don't know what is untrue. I'm completely in the dark. Complete ignorance. And Baladev Prabhu, he is the personification, the origin of Guru. So first, Baladev Prabhu, he dispatched the Dehukasura because he represents ignorance. So what does Sri Guru do? Sri Guru comes into our lives. Even we don't have the capacity to call Guru. Out of his causeless mercy, he comes here. He could be very happily doing bhajan and Vrindavan, but he has come here for us, to give us something. He doesn't need anything from us. So Sri Guru comes into our lives and he completely cuts the ignorance which is in our heart. With the sword of knowledge, he cuts at the ignorance, the knots of ignorance which are in our hearts. So in this Leela, in this Leela first Baladev Prabhu, Sri Guru completely destroyed the demon of ignorance, Denukasu, and all of his friends. All of his friends are representing so many other anarthas, things which are opposed to our progress in bhakti. And Krishna himself also joined in, and everyone was very happy in the end. Krishna, Balaram, and the cowherd boys. Really, Dhenkasu means donkey. He was engaged by guns to protect the trees, that forest, and he will supply all the tar fruit to Kansa. Even not to give Supreme Lord Krishna and his Sapha. Those for their sense gratification, they took fruit, vegetables, rice, or anything else for themselves or for relatives. They are all donkeys. <laughs> Those who don't offer Krishna, they are all like donkeys. Donkey is very foolish. So, in <coughs> rainy season, when there are plenty of crosses, grazing some land only, some distances, his stomach is full, and his eye did not took anything. Even his stomach is full. Mm. And in the dry season, no oh, no grass. Dried up. Miles and miles. Miles and miles he goes, but no grass. Then he sees backward and sees what looks, oh, I have grazed so much. <laughs> so he becomes fat. <laughs> Something more, especially 
If he will see a lady donkey, he will follow. And the lady will, by hind legs, kick his head. Even his the door. <laughs> so, those who do like this always inserted by their wives, but even following them, whole day, night, life, donkey working and feeding them, serving them. So these are donkeys. A guru can remove this foolishness. So Baladev Prabhu remove, killed Dhenukasu eh? and thus he gave knowledge that we should be engaged in Krishna service. This is thing. Kaliyana Daman. From very long time when Krishna was in Vrindavan, very long before, a very poisonous snake having thousands of hooves. Always uh, his poison coming out from his hooves. So whole Jamuna pond, not Jamuna, but connected with Jamuna some portion lay. So it became so poisonous that even a bird will uh, if fly, over. fly over she no, used to no, so what Krishna did Shyamarani Milayana in brief Krishna's coward friends were so thirsty 
they began to drink the water from the Jamuna, and immediately they became unconscious as if dead. So Krishna's life is his cowherd boyfriends, so he immediately put his nectar-like glance over his cowherd friends and brought them back to life. They became conscious immediately, and Krishna thought, I should do something. So he went over to one tree called Kali Kadamba tree. Kali means pastime. This is a very special pastime Kadamba tree of Krishna. He climbed upon that tree, having taken his cloth, his pitambar, and wrapped it around his waist as if preparing for a fight. Now this is the only tree that was alive. Because of Kaliya's very poisonous, all-pervading vapor, all the trees, bushes, grasses had all burnt. Why was this tree alive? Because Garuda, the Lord's bird carrier, long, long before, had been flying down from the heavenly planets with a pot of nectar that he was bringing to his mother, Vinita, to save her from the slavery of Kadru, who was actually the mother of Kaliya. So Garuda sat on that tree, and some of the nectar, some drops, fell on that tree, and therefore that tree remained very fresh. So Krishna climbed on that Kali Kadamba tree, slapped his armpits as though he was going to be a big wrestler, Supreme Personality of Godhead, playing in his human-like pastimes to attract all of us fallen conditioned souls who are suffering in the cycle of birth and death to come back to him by the power, powerful Harikita given by his pure devotee. So Krishna is performing these pastimes in the world for our benefits. He jumped into the lake and began making such a tumult of waves shooting very, very high. So in that lake there was an island with a tunnel in which Kaliya and his thousands of wives and children used to live. So that became flooded by Krishna's making the waves of the Jamuna go so high. Kaliya became angry, came out of that lake and began to attack Krishna. He immediately wrapped Krishna in his coils and Krishna became as if lifeless. Seeing that, all the coward boys, animals, peacocks, all the bridge bosses around immediately felt like they were losing their life because their life was Krishna. And so many bridge bosses, Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yasoda came, so many villagers came and wanted to run into the water to save Krishna, but they were stopped by Baladev who knew the truth. So gradually Krishna expanded himself, burst out of the coils of Kaliya, jumped onto his coils, his hoods, and began dancing there, just like Lord Shankar, Lord Shiva dances at the time of destruction of the universe. So Kali's wives were also present there, and seeing Krishna dancing on her husband's heads, and first flames and poisonous vapors were coming out, and gradually, by Krishna's kicking on his hoods, even though he tried to smash Krishna by his other coils, gradually blood started coming instead of fire and poison. Previously, his wives were thinking, what a foolish husband we have. Who wants a husband like that? Better he should die. But then, when they saw that by the kicking of Krishna, Kaliya was becoming weakened and thus submissive, Kali and Kaliya started thinking, Maybe my wives were right, because his wives were bhaktas, they were devotees. And for a long time they've been trying to tell their husband, Hari Kata, the glories of Krishna, and he was never interested. So now he's thinking, maybe my wives were right all along. Maybe he's God or somebody powerful like God, but he surely can defeat me. So he began surrendering to the Lord. And at that time, his wives began to pray differently. Kasyana bhavo, syana devo vidyate. 
Vidma hai. That is what austerities has our husband performed that now he's able to have the lotus feet of the Lord impressing themselves on his head and attaining the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord which even Lakshmi Devi, the goddess of fortune who performed many, many severe austerities for thousands upon thousands of years to attain the association of Krishna and Vrindavan Still, she could not attain it. So what great austerities did our husband perform that he now has that dust on his head? Now we don't want him to die. Better he should live. So they pray to Krishna that please save him. Why? There are many secret reasons that Srila Gurudev revealed. These wives being bhaktas, but they were also ladies. So ladies are physically weaker than men. So they were thinking, now if our husband dies and we're weak ladies, some very strong and powerful male serpents may come and take advantage of our chastity. How can we do our bhajan in that way? So better let our husband live, we'll do bhajan together, and in that way our chastity will be protected. So what austerities did Kaliya do? He was against bhaktas. He wasn't listening to his wives. But he had some great fortune. He had the association of his wives. He had the goodwill of his wives. Also, it's stated in Shastra that if one lives in Machara Mandala, even for one night, he becomes liberated from the cycle of birth and death. Kaliya had been living in that lake within the Jamuna for millions of years. So how much he was affected by the air and the ambience of Vrindavan. How much he had become purified. Otherwise he did no austerities but just living in Vrindavan. And therefore Gurudev is inviting everyone to come for Karti, to be with him for one month for uh, Parikrama at Karti time. And what other great mercy did he have? As you've heard, he was the enemy of Garuda. Garuda is the bird carrier of the Lord. And Garuda was eating many serpents and snakes in Nagalaya, where Kaliya previously lived. So whenever Garuda would eat a snake or a reptile, it's not like us, they just die. But because he's the bird carrier of the Lord, they would become liberated. But Kaliya was very envious of Garuda. So he even though an arrangement was made by Brahma that Garuda wouldn't keep taking snakes but he would get an offering once a month or once every fortnight, Kali began eating those snakes himself. So Garuda became very angry. And when a pure devotee becomes angry, his cursing is not different from his blessing because he's all merciful and all loving. So he began to fight with Kaliya and he slapped him with his big golden wings. So Kaliya was driven out of the place. And where did Kaliya go? Why did he go to Jamuna? Because he knew that there was a curse on Garuda, that if Garuda would ever come to the Jamuna, he would be killed. Garuda could never be affected by a curse because he's a pure devotee. But by the Lord's arrangement and Garuda's own mercy, he accepted the curse of Sobhari Rishi, who was angry that Garuda was eating the fish in the Jamuna. So Sobhari Rishi, who was a great sage, cursed him that if you ever come to the Jamuna again, you'll die. So what happened to this offensive, this offensive sage who cursed him? He was a great yogi doing meditation under the water, but he fell down and he became a materialistic householder attached to sense gratification, married 50 ladies and enjoyed his senses and suffered like anything for so many years. So by the mercy of Garuda, by accepting this curse, Kali knew about the curse and so he took shelter in the Jamuna. So now Krishna kicking him and kicking him, Kali has surrendered and, Jum and Krishna told him that now you should leave Jamuna and now you should go to Ramanaka Dwipa which is in Fiji, not like an exile, 
He said, now, even though you leave Jamuna, where Garuda doesn't go, Garuda will never hurt you, because he will see that you have my footprints on your head. So take your many thousands of wives and your children, and go to Ramana Kadweep and be happy there in Krishna consciousness. Then Krishna came out of the water, and all of his friends and relatives, Madhi Soda, Nanda Baba, they felt like they got back their life, because Krishna is their very life. And Nanda Baba performed charity and gave cows and gold to the Brahmanas because he saved their son. So simply by hearing the Lord's mercy to Kaliya, we become liberated from birth and death, and gradually, in the association of the pure devotee and his Hari Gita, we can go and join in Krishna's pastimes. Go pray and Hare Krishna. Narpatri began to pray Krishna. Kasyanu bhavo asyana devo vidme Tavam hireno sparsa dhita Yasin Even one day Anyone will be in Vrindavan. Krishna Bhakti Prajayat. Only one day living there, one night passing. So, thousands and lakhs and lakhs crores person come to Madhura Vrindavan. If one night even they there. Even bhakti prajayati, bhakti vinta. That is why from whole world we invite this Naudi Parikrama. And in Brajmandal for one month, Brajmandal Parikrama. That one month they will be in pressure and then your bhakti will come very soon. In life will be successful. So I invite you all. That is your Sudho very nearer Naudik Dham Parikama for only six, seven days. You can come. I am on the 2nd 28th. Now, Alambas Nurbad, Krishna was cowherd with ball ball and playing some play. And how that demon came in the form of a cow. Uh, no, Sakha. And he wanted to kiss, kill Krishna and Baladeva. Uh, First of all, I would like to, <coughs> after my millions and millions of heartfelt Dhanvat Pranam, and to the lotus feet of my most beloved spiritual master, the Divine Grace Sivindra Swami, Sri Srimad Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. After that, to all sannyasigan, <coughs> Brahmachari, Vaishnava Vaishnavi, esteemed listeners, please all of you accept my most humble obeisances. 
So in Vrindavan, Krishna and Balaram, along with all the sakhas and the cows, would go into Vrindavan to graze the cows. And at this time in Vrindavan, the summer season had arrived. And if any of you have been to Vrindavan or in India in the summertime, you know how hot it can get. But because Krishna had taken birth in Vrindavan, the normal summer actually became like spring. There was no blazing heat. In fact, no one even noticed that there was, there was any heat. And there was no discomfort. All the Brajabhasis, the Sakhas, all were in complete ecstasy. Flowers were blooming, bumblebees were humming, birds were singing and the peacocks were dancing. So this was the state of Vrindavan. Sometimes the Sakhas would go and engage in many beautiful types of playing activities. Sometimes Krishna or some Sakhas would imitate the bulls and they would fight amongst each other like this, banging their head. Sometimes they would play many different games. They would take mango fruit and pass it around as if they were playing catch. They would play with amala fruit. Sometimes they would play tag or sometimes like this, as children play hide and go see. So many games the Sakas would play with one another. Sometimes Baladev Prabhu or one Sakha would become very tired. So under any tree, he would lie down. And one Sakha would keep Baladev's head on his lap like a pillow. And Krishna would go there and start massaging that Baladev Prabhu or any Sakha's feet. So one day, the Sakha's decided to play a game. And they divided themselves into two teams. One team was headed by Krishna, and one team by Baladev Prabhu. So they were playing and they agreed that whoever will win this game, the losers have to carry the winners upon their shoulders. And they will go on a glory parade throughout the forest. So it so happened that Krishna's team had lost the game they were playing. And they had to carry Baladev Prabhu's team on their shoulders. That day, one Asur, one demon, had taken the form of a Sakha, and his name was Palambasur. This demon was sent by Kamsa Maharaj in order to kill Krishna and Baladev. So, Palambasur was on the loser's team, Krishna's team, and he had to carry Baladev Prabhu on his shoulders. So, Baladev Prabhu climbed on Palambasur's shoulders and started walking and Palambasur started carrying him throughout the forest. As he was carrying this demon, as this demon was carrying Baladev Prabhu, Baladev Prabhu's weight became so immense, like the Sumeru mountain. Thousands and millions and billions of pounds and tons of weight, it seems for this demon, he could not even support so this demon, assuming the form of a coward boy, he could not maintain this form any longer. So he had to revert back to his original demon-like form. And he grew to a very huge and amazing form. Then, when he was found out, Baldefu actually seemed a little frightened. He started shaking a little bit. And this demon tried to kill Baldev Prabhu. But Baldev Prabhu took his fist and he broke and bashed the skull of this demon. Bolo Baldev Prabhu ki jai. So, this pastime actually represents something even more deeper. That actually Baldev Prabhu we know is, represents a kind of Guru Tattva. So in this world, there are many, many people who try to claim to be a spiritual leader, a religious authority. They dress up in the vesh, in the dress of a sadhu, and go around wandering here and there, thinking 
believe themselves to be someone very advanced. They may even be able to deceive people. From their hands they may manifest some type of object and, or create some type of ash or what have you. But really these are not the signs of any Sadhguru. Sadhguru is one who can take you away from this material world and bring you to the supreme abode, Golok Vrindavan. So, many of these gurus, we need to, they come in the disguise of real gurus. But actually they're not gurus, real gurus whatsoever. And in fact, as in the Leela I just described, they become manifest, who they really are. They cannot maintain their actual form. Eventually, one day, they must show their true colors. So this is the other lesson we must learn from this as well. One day, the Sakhas had gone into the forest with their cows. And they were feeding their cows, but it was such a, it was a little bit warm, so the cows had gone off to feed some grass, eat some grass. So, Gurudev will describe this Leela. One shot of the Pilipis, but the last one will be the one. Now, that one day, he said to his cow, to all bow, and enter in a very dense forest. What became there? Yes, what is it? Adiyana, Kimiran, Rasya, Adiyana, Janama, Salatiya, Chakshiru, Miritamye, Na, Tasmai, Sri Guru, Vena, Bansha, Kanta, Tehutiya, Sri, Vipassana-vedra-jāpati-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-tādhāna-t
you know, has a unique individual relationship with Sri Krishna. And all the common boys who were assembled with Krishna, they were thinking and actually seeing right in front of them that Krishna is sitting there. And Krishna was sitting in front of each and every common boy. But nobody could see, except they thought Krishna is just sitting opposite of me. He is my dear most friend. And he's so kind and giving me this sweet ladu. Like this, these pastimes are so much helpful for us to develop a greed to also go to the spiritual world and be with Krishna. So as they were taking their lunch prasadam and joking with each other, the cows, they were wandering off. They were thinking, we see a beautiful hill there and there is some green grasses. Let us go there and eat the grasses. So as they were wandering off towards that hill with the green grasses, yeah, suddenly the cows found themselves surrounded by so much dry bamboo yeah, on the other side of the hill. And suddenly yeah, a fire broke out and all the cows, yeah, they were surrounded by the forest fire. Kamsa had sent one demon to destroy the cows. He was thinking, if I destroy them, then Krishna will be so much in lamenting. He will be so sad that he will give up his life because he cannot live without the cows. He cannot come back without the cows. So the cows were surrounded by the forest fire. And all they were thinking, calling out for Krishna, 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 at once. Krishna came there. His coward boys all were present. And Krishna said, please, all of you, close your eyes. Yeah? They all closed their eyes, and in one second, Krishna preserved the complete forest fire. Why did he say, close your eyes? Yeah? Krishna remembered that he was a small boy. He was eating some dirt at Brahmandagat. Yeah? And his mother, yeah, all the coward boys, they were accusing him, he's eating dirt, talking to Mother Yasoda, your Mother Yasoda, telling him, what are you doing? You naughty boy, open your mouth. And Mother Yasoda opening his mouth and seeing all the universes. And she could not believe her eyes. He said, this is not possible. Some ghost, something has possessed my small child. I will do yagya and bring so many Brahmins and purify yeah, this situation that goes to go. So Krishna remembered, if they all see that I swallow the forest fire, mother will become very upset and again see the rain so many things. I should not do this. Yeah. So at once forest fire was gone and all the cows were saved. Jai Sri Krishna Ki Jai. So what is the teaching here? Yeah. Cows are called Go. Yeah. Go, Gopa, Go. So the cows are, go also is the meaning for senses, our senses, yeah. our eyes, our ears. We're always thinking that there is something more beautiful somewhere else, isn't it? Something is there which we don't have here and we want to obtain that. The grass is always greener on the other side. The cows are thinking, so our senses are like that. Always bewildered by the glaring, glittering of this material nature. Thinking if I will live in Durban on the ocean side, I can have more fun, will be more happy than here in Johannesburg, isn't it? Or if I will be a rich man, or if I will marry that beautiful girl, I'll be happy forever. Yeah. So many thoughts are in our mind. Our mind is always making big chaos for us. Our senses also, seeing so many beautiful objects and we become bewildered if I have that, yeah, then I will be happy. But really, this is all the illusory trick of Maya. And if we follow our senses, we will end up in the forest fire of material existence. And there's only one person who can save us there, Sri Krishna. Actually, we do not know how to obtain Sri Krishna, how to get his help, until and unless we surrender to Bhagavad Guru, who is Ashraya Krishna, Ashraya Bhagavan. Yeah? Only by the help, calling out for Sri Gurudev, taking his complete shelter, always remembering him in time of 
difficulties, in time of fortune, always remember this is the mercy of Sri Guru that I can remember him and use my talents, whatever I have in his service, under his guidance, my life will be perfect. Gopis, lost to beloved of Krishna. When Krishna in evening time used to come from cow herding, they wanted to see Krishna and they used to curse Brahma, why he has made eyelids. We want that we have, we should have thousands and thousands of eyes without lips and we can see Krishna. So, how love and affection for Krishna, in daytime what they if Krishna goes to cow herding, then gopis cannot go with him in cow herding. So, in houses, in a group, so Jatiya Asa, one kind of move gopis used to, they used, used to, uh, Discuss. Eh? Discuss Krishna's pastime. Oh, sweet pastimes of Krishna. And this way, they were waiting for uh, evening when cows feed dust will go across and they will hear sweet voice of the Bansi of Krishna. So, how they were passing their day, Madhva Maharaj will speak something. He will touch. If we explain more, then two days may take. So he will touch one day. Om Agyana Timirandhasa Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksurun Militanena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kalpatarupascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanan Pavanebho Vaishnavebho Namo Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First of all, I pay my humble obeisances and the Lord of my Paramaradha Guru Pad Padma Om Vishnu Pad Ashto Darasata Sishti Madhu Bhakti Vedanta Sleva Amma Sai Maharaj and Om Vishnu Pad Parivraja Kacharya Varja Asto Dara Sata Sushmat Bhakti Vedanta Svanarayam Gosai Maharaj. I pay my humble obeisances under the lotus feet of my spiritual grandsire, Nitta Lila Prasun Vishnu Pad Sila Bhakti Pradhyan Kesa Gosai Maharaj and Nitta Lila Prasun Vishnu Pad Sila Bhakti Un Swami Maharaj. I pay my obeisances all Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis who assemble here, headed by the Dandis and Nasis. Sila Gurudev ordered me to touch only Benu Geet. So you have heard from Guru Dev. When Krishna used to go for cow grazing, at that time, the Braj Gopis, they, cannot, they could not go. Why? Because they are in law's house. If they will go, then their father-in-law, especially mother-in-law, sister-in-law, criticize them. And according to Vedic tradition, Lady is not allowed to go for cow grazing only, boys will go. So when Krishna walk out from Braj, 
in the forest are Kaudrezi and Gopis who loves Krishna more than any other of the Javasis, they became very sad. For them to spend one moment without Krishna like a millennium and millennium, very difficult to spend their life. They think when Krishna will come back again, we will take his darshan. How to spend the time? Then they became group, like-minded group, and discussing about Krishna's past time. They have been in their house, and they saw in their bhavnetra that Krishna is grazing cows, and the deer and doves, they are hearing Krishna's fruit sound. The female deer and doves come ahead, going ahead, close to Krishna, and their husband, the deer, they followed them. Suppose they are telling, oh, you can go and take Krishna darshan, no problem. We will check you. I am with you. So no one to criticize you, no one to beat you. Don't worry. Gopis are thinking, oh, alas, alas, we are so unfortunate. Even the deer, their husband, the doves, they are so fortunate. They are going close to Krishna. And their husband, deer, they are following them and supporting them. But for ourselves, if our husband or in-laws, family member, any know about, knew about that, they'll criticize us and chastise us. Especially, Sri Radha Thakurani's mother-in-law was Jatila. Jatila means make any simple thing complex. And sister-in-law Kutila. Kutila means always make over some without any, for nothing. So, pay on us, pay on us. Better when we die, then we pray to Brahma, the next birth will be do. Then our husband will follow us, go to Krishna's darshan. They get the song, Krishna playing through on the bank of Jamuna. And Jamuna water gradually grazing, going up, rising up, 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 and touch Krishna's feet. And want to embrace Krishna, but immediately they became feel ascent, only taking one lotus and putting Krishna's lotus feet. Gopis being in their own house, Seeing this in Bhavnatra, oh, look, this Jamuna, how fortunate is she? Krishna playing through on the bank of Jamuna. Jamuna rising and by the waves like their hand, and they embrace Krishna and offering lotus flower direct Krishna's lotus feet. How fortunate are they? Alas, alas, if we be Jamuna, then our life will be successful. Then we can embrace Krishna and can offer anything direct in his lotus feet, but not possible for us. Again they saw that hot summer day, Krishna is grazing cows, but Krishna's sokha, like cloud-like his sokha, and they covered Krishna's top of head and drizzling gradually. Gopi Satin, look, look, how the clouds are fortunate. They make like a big umbrella on the top of Krishna's head. The Krishna will not feel any hot. And moreover, they are sprinkling water, the drizzling water on the top of Krishna's head. Oh, alas, alas, if we die, we pray to Brahma, we want to be cloud. Then we can be top of Krishna's head like an umbrella, then no one is there to criticize us. By this way, we can serve Krishna. Whatever they are seeing, they are thinking this is the best part to serve Krishna. But due to the influence of Jagmaya, or due to the influence of Krishna Prem, they feel always unsatisfied. In previous night, they met with Krishna, and next day, when Krishna coming out from Kunja, and Krishna in his lotus feet, then Kumkum touch on the grass. Grass, there's some dew was there, then it touch on the grass and the mountain girl, a villainy, they took all that kumkum and smear on their face and whole body. Gopis being in their house, seeing in their bhavnetra, look how this mountain girl, Purna Pulinda Urugaya Padabjala, how they are fortunate. Look, Krishna's lotus foot, the kumkum is there, they smear on their own body. But we could not do so. We are so unfortunate. Alas, alas, if we we'll die, we we'll pray Brahma to next birth will be 
pulindi kanna prakara pulindi but the further that kumkum come from gopi's body when krishna met with them and embraced them that kumkum from gopi's body to when krishna speak and that kumkum touch with grass by the influence of krishna from the further everything they are thinking that this pulindi kanna is best so when will die they will be the pulindi kanna by this way, whatever they are seeing, they are thinking this birth is best. But among Krishna's associates, the in Braj, Sakas are more superior to others. Moreover, parents headed by Nanda and Jasada, they are more superior. Moreover, the Braj Gopis, they can serve Krishna what Krishna wants. They can fulfill Krishna's all desire what either Sakha or parents or combined Sakha or parents or other devotees cannot do so. But this is the nature of Krishna pain. How much you have, you feel always unsatisfied and you think I am inferior to others. So Gurudev ordered the touch only. So I am touching only this and not uttering any slokas. There are so many slokas. So I don't want to take so much time. So I am now stopping here. Hare Krishna. Bansha, Kalya, 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 very brief.